about three weeks ago, I was just sitting with the Lord and it's one of those, you sit with the Lord and sometimes, often, just nothing. I just sit with him, no, nothing said, nothing, you know, there's no fireworks. It's just sitting. It's just like sitting with someone indoors that you, you live with, you love, and you don't have to speak. And I had thought, oh, I've got to get up now. I've got to go off somewhere. And just before I did, the Holy Spirit just spoke these words. I wasn't expecting there was nothing in the flow of this. And he said, get up, dust yourself off. There is still work to be done. And I wrote it in my journal and I dashed off. And I, to be honest, I didn't think of it again that day. But the next day, it was my daily reading because I read through the Bible systematically. And it was Isaiah 52. And this is what it said, wake up, get up, put on your garments of strength, shake off the dust, proclaim the good news. And it was the very words that God had given to me the day before in the spirit. So obviously I sat up and took notice. And I read it again, wake up, wake up Zion, clothe yourself with strength, put on your beautiful garments of splendour and rise from the dust, sit in a place of honour and remove the chains of slavery from your neck and I will reveal my name to my people. Get up and go and proclaim the good news. It said how beautiful on the mountain are the feet of him who bring good news. So I'm just here to share what God has uh, given to me over the, the last couple of weeks. This is interesting though. He gave me this, get up, there's a work now. There's a, there's a fresh work. Like Luke said, it's spring. We got, it, there's a new work, a new assignment. So what does the enemy do? Immediately comes in to snatch away in a ball. That which God has just said to me, I've given you this, get up. And he's tried to knock me down. I want you to know this because when God speaks to you, it's all encouraging and you'll jump up and you'll go, oh, yeah, I'd like to do that. Or yes, God, I will write that book. Or yes, God, I will start that ministry in the church. And then the enemy will just come in to take the carpet under your feet and try and floor you. But he can't. He hasn't got the amount of power that you think he has over your life. And so number one, wake up, get up. In this passage, it says, get up. Now, this is a picture of someone who's sitting in the corner of a, like a prison cell. You know the picture where you see them, they're sitting, they've got their knees around, sitting with their hands around their knees, they're in the corner. They're dejected, they're hopeless, they're helpless, they feel abandoned, they feel depressed, they feel guilty, they feel accused. They, you know, that is the image here. It says he's calling you to, to rise up out of this, to stop this feeling worthless. Satan has been able to somehow get into your life to attack you and has cornered you. So here you are and you're sitting in the corner feeling all these things coming under all his accusations. And the spirit is saying, come on, now number one, get up. Get up out the corner. That's your number one thing. Stand up. Don't sit there and let him beat you up. When I was on the mission field, something really, really traumatic happened to me. And, and I thought, for me, it felt like the end of the world. And I slid down the wall in my, in my house and I sat like that in the corner and I couldn't move. And I was so traumatised. And I said, this is the end. And um, do you know, I was, wasn't there long and the spirit said to me, get up, How dare, don't sit in the corner. He, I felt like I was sitting in the corner. He was just bashing me over the head and just punching me. And the spirit said to me, get up. That's the number one thing, get up. Mm -hmm. Don't sit in the corner. You're not under, you're above, remember. And um, number two, shake off. Begin to shake off the work of the enemy. Have you ever been in church? I don't know if you've been in these sort of churches. Our churches, the churches we've been in the past, like to symbolise. And sometimes we go and they say, come on, people, you're not worshipping. Let's shake off the weak. Let's shake off the enemy. Let's shake off the dust. Let's shake off the depression. Let's just shake off what the enemy's tried to put on us. And, he, and, and the spirit is saying here, now get up, now shake off. What, whatever he's been putting on you in the corner there, shake it off. And... Um, you have to make the first move, you see. You have to be proactive. He can't keep you captive. He doesn't have that much power over you. You have to give him that power. Do whatever it takes. Plead the blood. Repent. Take communion. Pray with a friend. Get anointed with oil by the elders. Whatever it takes to get you up, start shaking him off. It says, humble yourself. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Do you know, once he sees you start getting up, he starts getting worried. He really does start getting worried. 
You're a threat to him. As soon as you start getting up and stop letting him pummel you in the corner there. The spirit says, put on garments of strength. Well, what are they? What are these garments of strength? It says, instead of sitting there in this sackcloth and ashes and in all this dirt, get up, shake off what he's put on you and put on garments of strength. Well, what are they? To me, they're praise. That gives me strength. The blood gives me strength. And the Holy Spirit gives me strength. So I need to get up and quickly ask the Holy Spirit to come. And Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit and anoint me, cover me, just saturate me with the Holy Spirit and his strength will come back into my spirit. So this, my testimony this week, when the enemy knocked me down, I, I really was just temporarily just, oh my goodness, what has happened? And I tried to put on something on my phone to, in, to in a word, a word of scripture, and it kept flicking onto a song of the blood. And I kept putting it, just switching it back to healing verses, and it kept switching it back to the, and I thought, this is how path has never happened before. Then it, it clicked. I think God wants me to declare the blood. So what I did was I put on, I found a medley of blood songs that I've never played before, and I put them on. And I didn't play them for five minutes. I played them for hours. And as I started to play the blood medley, the blood songs, so I felt the enemy. I could literally feel him being pushed back off of me. I could feel him tangibly, not going from me, but going further and further out the room. And I just played that. I played it for the rest of the day. I played it all night. I played it the next day. And I have just believe that my recovery is not even my faith or anything else. It's the power of the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. The power of the blood of Jesus is still that powerful. There's nothing else. There's nothing else can cleanse us. Nothing else can heal us. Nothing else will get us into heaven. Nothing else will push back the enemy from us like the power of the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It works every time if you are in a place to believe that the blood is that powerful. And so that day, the, the enemy started, and that was just the next, I don't know if it was the same day. I can't remember, I lost track. But all I know is I went to bed that night quite concerned what's going to happen in, in the night. David was there keeping vigil with me because I was still obviously at shook my body so much. I was in the aftermath of that. But I went into this dream. And in the dream, this vicious dog, really vicious dog, came at me. And he had the teeth snarling. And he came at me t t in the spirit to eat up my flesh. You know, he was going to attack my body. And I remember in the, in the dream, even though I was in the aftermath of this physical attack, I shouted so loud at this, at this dog. And I shouted. And I sort of growled back. And he cowered. He was like so shocked. He cowered back and went, mm, mm. And I realized when I woke up, the blood of Jesus had pushed back those demons that came to, to eat up my flesh. But they stumbled and fell back just like the dog did in my dream. So Psalm 28, when the enemy comes at me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell because of the name of Jesus, because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. It says even though an army is camped around me, even though war rises up, can you imagine one person having a war against them like David did? They all came out against David, a whole army surrounded him when he was anointed. As soon as God told him what he was going to do. And so then it says, ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. That's your strength. And then he says, now you've put on strength and they're put back on your garments, not the garments that the enemy put on you, the depression, the heaviness, the, the accusations that you put on your garments of splendor, righteousness, holiness, again, the Holy Spirit. But you, you've got priestly garments. If you could see yourself in the spirit, you don't look like you do in the natural. You've got these robes of righteousness. You've got royal robes. You've got mantles that God's put on you for certain assignments. You're wearing crowns. You've got a scepter in your hand. We should be using our God-given authority in these times. We're not victims walking upon, upon, across the earth waiting for Jesus to come back and save us. We are here to rule and take dominion mm -hmm. and, and have authority. And so these garments of splendor, we need to put them back on. And, and, and by that, get in the word, remember who you are. Remember who you are in God. Yeah. Remember you're not a pushover. 
you really are not. The enemy might be, but you're not. Rise up from the dust. The dust represents a place of mourning. Or maybe you've been in a place where you have sinned and you're in a place of repentance and you think, I've, I've messed up again and I'm sitting here because of my own mistakes or stupidity or whatever. But you know, he says, rise up from the dust, rise up from the sackcloth and ashes. Okay, you've sinned, but my blood is more powerful than that. Be forgiven, get cleansed, get healed, move on. Don't just stay there, just rise up. And I just want to say that if you're there because of a place of loss or separation, leave the grief, stop looking behind at what you've lost. Get back up in God. There is a lot more for you ahead than what you might have lost. Times change, people change, they move on. People leave us. People we want in our lives, we separate from. It's hard, it's not easy, but you have to release people. You have to release them to God because God will either, number one, bring them back at another time into your life or number two, bring other people in place of them or number three, he'll give you more of himself so you'll never feel that gap. I've had this experience over and over because I'm, by, by spiritual nature, I'm a pioneer. So God's called us out of comfort zones over and over to pioneer new things. So it's meant leaving people that we've got attached to. We love, even family members. It's never been easy. I've, n I've never done it without tears and a time of mourning. But there's always time to go, okay, Pauline, you've had your time. Up now, we're off. It's the new thing. Don't hold on to that. Don't hold on to them. Don't just release them like the bird, you know, a dove. Release them to God and God will do something amazing. When I was, um, uh, shortly after we married and I felt pregnant, my sister also got pregnant and both of us were like baby buddies. We didn't plan it. We had no idea that we were both going to end up pregnant at the same time. And our babies were due within 10 days of each other. So when they were born, I had Luke and she had a little girl and we were doing everything together. It was like your, your life is filled with a new baby, and this is my first baby, and hers was. So we had each other, and every day we'd see each other. And, and, and my whole world was that. And then, shortly after, she came and she said to me, oh, I've got some news, um, we're moving, moving away because her husband's work, or so I can't remember why now. And I was absolutely shook to the core. And I just thought, no, how am I going to cope? You're my baby buddy. I have got nobody else because it's been you and me. And we've had this little bubble. And I remember going into the bedroom and, and sitting on bed crying and saying to God, I've lost the only person in my world. And it was the first time God ever said this to me. But it's happened so many times since that I don't even fear leaving, losing people in the same way now because... The Spirit said to me for the first time ever, um, Pauline, when one door closes, another one will open, a bigger one. And, you know, my sister moved away and it was sad. But, you know, after that, two doors opened and they were a girl from my church and a girl from the school. And, um, and do you know what? They became like life partners. They became really good friends. And we did life together for the next so many years. And you know, God did not leave me desolate. He doesn't want to, he never leaves us. And I could tell you that story of having to leave my parents and God doing it again and having to leave my children, whatever. God has always, when I've released that, I've not stayed in a place of mourning, looking back, I want the past, I want my old friends back. He's always come up and uh, filled my life. So. God's plan is to never leave you desolate. When you feel most deserted, you never know who is going to walk into your life or what God's about to do. That's all I know. He's done it for me so many times. Then he says, get up, shake off the dust, get up, do all this. Then he goes, sit. So I'm like, God, you've just got us up. Now you're telling us to sit. But he's saying, no, you're not going to sit back in the corner. This time you're going to sit where you should be, in heavenly places, on the throne. And you're going to rule and reign from there now. You've got to get back up on your feet and start being who God's called you to be. Yeah. Yeah. And rule from that place of victory, not from the place of defeat. Mm. It doesn't matter. The enemy will accuse us till I die in day. He will try and make us feel bad. He will try and make us feel depressed. That's his job. That's his nature. That's going to happen. 
We just have to know who we are and remember. And we have to remember we're not here on this earth. We're sitting in heavenly places. We're spiritual people. We're not just physical people. And that's where we're reigning from. And number seven, it says, shake off the bonds of your neck. You know, when they were sitting in that prison, they had chains on them. And it was like a yoke. I mean, obviously, years ago, I mean, in, back in Bible times, they would have yokes put on them so they couldn't move. And if and a yoke that's put on like an oxen makes you go around in circles. It made the oxen just go around the field. It sends you around in circles. And God is saying there, deal with those besetting sins. Deal with those things that make you go around in circles. What's the thing that keeps coming up? And you think you dealt with me, it keeps coming up. He's saying, now sh break off the bonds of your neck. Now, I only know one way to do this because it says in Isaiah 11 that under the, if you have enough anointing, it makes you fat and the fatness will break off the yoke of your neck. When you get anointed in the Holy Spirit, you get so anointed, those yokes just break off. Because you're getting, it's like the whole, I don't know if any of you know the whole, the old Marvel character, but he's only an ordinary man. But when this power comes on him, he gets so strong, his neck breaks out and everything breaks out and he breaks out of everything, every chain. That is always the picture I see of Isaiah 11, where the Holy Spirit is so strong on us, it breaks off what the enemy's put on us and it breaks off these sins that, and these things that in our life, these cycles that just keep coming around. And the power of the blood, the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit will do that. And then lastly, it says, after you've done these things, go, go, go to the mountains and share the good news. Mm -hmm. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who proclaim the good news. Go and set somebody else free. Yeah. If you've been set free from your prison, isn't it just fair to go to somebody else's prison and say, come on, you can come out of here. God's paid the price to set you free. There is still a divine assignment for you to finish. Do you know the lady who led me to the Lord? She prayed for me for years before I surrendered my whole life to God. Every day she prayed for me. But she would write to me. And this is what she kept saying. Pauline, there's a work for Jesus only you can do. There's a work for Jesus only you can do. If you're not doing it, who's going to do it? And there's an assignment and there's a destiny and there's a call and there's a work on your life. It might be to one, reach one person in your world who's going to reach, a, like, be like a Billy Graham and reach the whole world. It might be, you know, that you're a teacher in a school that's going to reach those, somebody in your class. It, there's an assignment that you need to complete before you finish this race. And there is a work for Jesus only you can do that we can't do, that nobody else but you can do. And God wants you to fulfill that. He's saying, come on, get up now. Shake yourself down. Whatever's caused you to be down, whatever stopped you, shake it off and get going. There's a work for you to do. Father, I just want to thank you. I thank you there's a divine call over every single one of us. Every one of us has a significant call on our lives that's going to change somebody's life and father god i pray today for a rising up in our spirits that we will come out of that call now that we will come out of the containment we will rise up with new strength with new authority with new vision and father with a recommission that we are going to complete that which you've called us to do yeah. father we're going to leave this planet in you in your power and strength and not under the power of the enemy. And I just thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I just want to cast off any works of darkness right over you now. I want to specifically cast off a spirit of heaviness that's come upon any of you to keep you down, any depression that the enemy's tried to put on you. If the, if the enemy sent deep demonic attack against your body, I'd take authority over that in Jesus' name. And I declare Psalm 27 over you that the enemy will stumble and fall as you rise up because of the name of Jesus and the power of his blood. And I command all depression to leave you and all helplessness, hopelessness to leave you right now in Jesus' name. It has no right to you in the name of Jesus. But in Jesus' name, I release hope, vision, and the strength of the Holy Spirit upon you today in Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. Amen.